So in this video, you're going to get to see me give pop superstar Niall Horan a golf lesson actually out on the golf course. You're going to get to see me, first of all, look at his iron play and his ball strike and his direction. Then we're going to go to the green. You know, Niall is an incredibly keen golfer, probably just like you, and he's desperate to improve. Now, he absolutely loved the lesson. He massive smile at the end. So come and join me right now, and hopefully it's going to help you too. And hopefully you're just going to naturally enjoy this whole process. What have we got here now? We've got, we've got 145 into and off the right. Off the right. Yeah, what's that's par three. Your, what's your 145 club? Uh, pitch wedge or in this wind, probably hit nine iron. Okay, big boy, that's pretty good actually. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I've got my, uh, my the new paradigms are just the best iron I've ever played with. And uh, quite- Can you hit them a little bit further? Yeah, yeah. I'm hitting them a club further at least. Yeah. Um, but the, the, they're not, the dispersion is, a lot lower than anything I've used before. Just out of interest, how long have you been playing? How long have I been playing? I probably started playing really when I was about 13. Started off with a normal handicap. Yeah. Very easy to get into golf when I was when it was my when I was young. You know, I had Tiger on a Sunday night. But <laughs> you know, it wasn't a, a bad way to get into the game. And at the time, there was a lot of great Irish golfers that were flying Clarkey and Harrington. And how beginning. how have you how have you learned the game? I mean, because I, I a little birdie tells me that. You learn the guitar from watching kind of YouTube, was it? Yeah. Really? Yeah, no, I just, I would sit on YouTube and just like see where their, their hands went on the fretboard and really? pause the video. So it wasn't instructional, you were actually just watching the guys? Just watching, yeah. I st a lot of the chords I play now, I couldn't even tell you what I'm playing. No way. Just because I just, yeah, I hear sounds and obviously then naturally had rhythm, thank God. Yeah. Um, Maybe not, maybe not in the button, but we'll find out later. <laughs> we'll find out later. <laughs> so, what about golf? How do you, have, you, have you learned golf the same way? Have you had a lot of coaching? And yeah, no, no. I think I've um, obviously good friends with a couple of the lads, and I've picked up a few tips. But like, I, yeah, I just watch watch a lot of golf, watch yeah. a lot of videos like yourself, and get an understanding that way. Um, yeah, and just. I just naturally have some sort of an understanding on what it sh I should be doing. And is that through observing just golfers as opposed to listening to instruction? Is it more just observing or like you did with the guitar? A bit of, a bit of both. A bit of both. Yeah, it obviously depends on what, with the way my, my brain works. The creative side of my brain would, would hear and see. Okay, And I would hear a little bit, yeah. If I, but if I, if I just say if I was to read a golf book, yeah. I wouldn't have you a chance. You wouldn't have a chance, no, yeah, no. interesting. I, like, I have to be able to see it and, like, yeah, I and understand why this is this way and that's that way and all You're that quite, kind of quite stuff. Quite visual? Yeah, 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 I think so, yeah. Cool. I think so. So 145. The wind's picked up a little it bit. Has. Probably you playing... stick with nine? Are you happy with nine? Yep. Yep. I think we, it should be all right. Would you do anything different? Is it standard, standard nine iron flight or would you play a bit lower? Uh, I would definitely have, I would probably play this like my pitching wedge stance. I'd have it somewhere in the middle. Yep. Um, yeah, and try and cut it off a little bit. Just to keep it down? Yeah, yeah, just to try. I, I mean, I struggle with keeping the ball down, so even when I do put it in the middle of my stance, a lot of the time it'll still go up. But yeah, that's yeah. just that's something I haven't learned. We'll have yet. a look at that at some stage. Yep. Pull that one. Um, yeah, I have a habit of pulling. Um, so you see, my yeah, misses right. a pull definitely. You see, that's kind of like a, almost cur a lot of curve on there as well. Yeah. Okay. So all you got to think about when the ball curves, I'll borrow your club for a second. Yep. Very simple as this. So ultimately, I can't wait to imagine one's club first and one's path. Mm -hmm. Yep. So if you look at this here, the only way you've curved that ball, which is what we try and figure out in a, maybe a lesson situation. Yep. So your club path must have gone this way yep. and your first must be aiming this way. Yep. Okay, that's the only way, Absolutely. It's the only way that you can create that curve. Mm -hmm. So what we do is, is we, we, you know, the first thing I always fix before we do anything, we won't even worry about path mm -hmm. to start with. What I would do is I want that face to start matching your path. So right. maybe even you push it. Right, okay. So what I'd do is I'd, I'd start to look at maybe my club face, setting that club face maybe a fraction open at the start. Yep. That might give you a straight push. Mm -hmm. But then once you've got the push, then we can start to then work on changing the path. Changing it's it. very hard in a sense when that ball, in a sense, we need to get the path obviously more left, don't mm -hmm. we, to hit it straighter. But if you've got a face that's, if your misses are our left and you start trying to change your path, we're in big trouble. Yeah. You, know, you can yeah. go left going left. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So Absolutely. What, so get yourself set and just hit a shot. Maybe just set that face just a little bit more open. more open at the start. We're not changing the path that's there, so we might hit this a bit right. But once we've done that, then we can worry about changing the uh, the path later. 
Makes sense. Yep. So look how much straighter that is. Sets so off right the flag. I'll do nicely. Nearly to hold him on there. Nearly hold him on. <laughs> that will do just nicely. We're nearly all going to Vegas. I got it. So <laughs> tell right. me, tell me a little bit about um, your this year. You've got like a crazy schedule this year. Yeah, I know. This year is going to be a great year. I think um, I've moved into the arenas of the world, and uh, I haven't toured since 2018. Wow. Planned on touring and planned planned on touring in 2020, obviously, and then we yeah. had the. The something pandemic, happened, yeah, yeah, something happened. So I haven't toured like in five, nearly four, nearly five years, yeah. um, and I'm I'm just really excited to get out there, and I feel like I've created a, a really good show. And the, luckily enough, the fans have uh, never left me, and have you know become even stronger around me, and and have uh, allowed me to play in these big sports arenas all over the place. So I'm very excited. You've been a little bit kind of uh, playing it down a little bit because you've <laughs> done a couple of things. You've, you've sold out Madison Square Garden. Two days running. Mm -hmm. um, when you said you only thought you were going to sell out what? Different <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> And you're doing how many concerts this year? I think we're up at 80 something um, right now. Uh, that may be added to, I don't know. But yeah, no, it's, it's going to be a busy year. There's a gig every other day. That's right. um, sometimes two in a row, day off, couple in a row, day off, one, day off. It's kind of probably. Are you going to fit in some golf? Oh, yeah. <laughs> There's no doubt uh, the clubs go more places than the guitar do. Uh, <laughs> but um, yeah, I always try and, you know, before sound check, get out early in the morning, especially yeah. you're going to different countries every day. You know, when I tour Europe, I'm going to sleep in Spain, waking up in Italy, you know, and there's an opportunity to play golf. I'll always take it, no, no doubt. Yeah, it's a great way to get the handicap down. Well, we've almost got a hole in one. <laughs> you said uh, your putting's been a bit of your weak point. Yes. So let's now maybe have a look at this putting stroke. That would be great. Thank All you. All right, buddy. <laughs> okay, pull that one. Okay. So before we go any further, let's check. Let's just test your green reading. Okay. So it's always for me stage one. It's a great thing to do when you arrive on a golf course. We'll do green reading. There's, there's two or three things in putting. You've got green reading. You've got um, strike. Are you striking out the middle of the face? Are you setting the ball off in line? and you've got pace control. Yep. Okay, those are the kind of things that uh, are key to putting, right? So we're gonna test out your greens uh, reading first. Um, I want you to simply to find straight. So when you arrive on a putting green, the yep. first thing to do is see if you can actually find a straight putt. Okay. And you're gonna do it by your on, eye. On this line, or do you want me to move around? Anywhere you like, okay. anywhere you like. You've, you've got to find what you feel is a straight putt. And I imagine the lowest part here in the bowl has got a straight put somewhere. Okay. Look. So does this look straight to you? Uh, no straight. Feel straight is over here somewhere. Okay. So this is just a really good kind of almost a mini test and see how your green reading is. Yeah. I think this has definitely got a bit of right to left, but a little bit of right to left. I pulled that one, but did it move right to left though? A little, no. di a little, did it? Tiny little bit. A little bit, right? So, so straight away off the bat, your green reading looks pretty solid. Yeah. Okay. If the balls turn right to left, yeah. which way do we move? Back this way. Absolutely. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Um, so we're probably here somewhere, I'd imagine then. So the fact that you can now, you're, you're able to identify that, it's a great start. It shows that you really understand green reading. Pull that one again. Okay. My fault. But that you was a straight forward. Straight do you feel like, so you've got this bit of a... Yeah. Okay. You said off camera, didn't you, that you like to feel quite tall in your, in your posture. Okay. And what I'm seeing in the way you stood to the ball at the moment, if you get yourself set. Now, if you're tall like this, okay, mm -hmm. can you see that what you're doing is your head's at this angle, okay, mm -hmm. and your eyes are almost like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Now, when you're doing that, you, you, we've got what's called a secondary gaze, okay? Now, if I was to put my hand in front of your face and you did this, okay, your depth perception is nowhere near as good as if you then looked straight at it <laughs> with a primary yeah. gaze. So you're literally, I was effectively looking out my periphery. Yes, Yeah. exactly. So that makes it difficult, in a sense, to get that coordination. So mm -hmm. it's going to affect your strike. It's going to affect your green reading as well when you're actually over the golf ball, okay? Yeah. And it's really going to affect potentially your pace control. Lots of things happening. But the other thing it does is when you stand in a really tall position like this, mm. 
you're also sitting the shoulders back. So the problem is, is your shoulders now want to work too much in an arc, okay? Mm -hmm. You're trying to have a mini arc, so what you're doing is you're almost then manipulating that mini arc with your hands and arms. Okay. So your hands and arms are wanting to do one thing and your body's wanting to do another thing. Mm. So all I want you to do here is, is what's really good is, is when you set up to the golf ball, we want to see the, um, the head, the middle of the, the chest and the putter kind of all beautifully lined up. You do a really good job of that. Okay. Yes, that's really, really nice. All we want to do now is, is allow the head, top, upper part of the back, just to drop down so that you're looking straight after say, like, eat pie. Mm. Yeah, you've been pied mm. in the face. Mm. So jump in. It's funny you say that because <laughs> all of the best putters in the world, from Jack, <laughs> Jack, Jack wasn't like this, no, was exactly. he? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> he was down here. Exactly. I mean, you, when you're down here, look. You, the other thing, when you're down here, you can read the line. Look. Mm. Yeah. As opposed to here, again, not only have you got periphery vision here, you're kind of like. Yeah. Yeah. It's all you know what in my head now. All of my previous ideas of what to do are all making sense because I would feel like I'm a decent. I can see the line. Yeah. And then I get in and I match up and then I, it doesn't look. It disappears. Yeah, I, like, I, I always pick like a spot here somewhere yeah, yeah. to try and line up to that. And I know if I get it over there, I'm off to a good start. Yeah. Um, but now, yeah, it's all, it's all starting to add up. <laughs> so let's just start with that. So we're going to um, just get you into a, a position that is going to give you a better chance to make a more consistent stroke. Okay. It should feel more comfortable as well. Because your arms, when, the other thing, when you, when you drop down, your arms are going to sit much naturally, much closer to your body as well. Okay. Yeah, all of, a, all of a sudden, like, the thing you hear about your biceps, you know, tucking into your ribs. Yep. Is... And these, you know, no one invented this, do you, right? People say when they put well, these feel like they're connected. Well, they naturally connect when you drop your head. Yeah. Yeah? Of course, yeah. Yeah. A little bit harder, that was making it. Nice, right. So now we've got you set up, okay? For me, the next most important uh, thing that you'll see with any great putter is great putters, you can see them a mile away. Mm. They just look, they like this has been blended into their hands. Mm. It's just beautiful, is it, to mm. see? And, and you, they, there's something about when you watch them, they look, they're gonna hold this, yeah. right? Mm. And then you've got the guys who don't look like that. Mm. They might look technically brilliant, but they, they look like they've had, they've been overcoached. Mm. Really, really technical. They have days when it, it works, mm -hmm. and then other days where it's just horrendous. Mm -hmm. What's the difference? Hands and arms. Potentially, but you're, you're a musician, right? Rhythm. Rhythm. You know, they've just got something about them, you know. You know, you know what I want to see with yourself is, is at the moment, I'm seeing, when you stood over the golf ball, I'm seeing a lot, it's quite static. It's like there may be stuff, a lot going on in your head, almost like a checklist mm. of stuff yeah, maybe. Yeah. And what I want to see is, is I want to bring your music into your putting. So I'd like to see some more rhythm to, uh, to what you're doing. And what I mean by that is, is great putters, I'll just stand there for a second. So what you'll see with great putters is, is they're constantly on the move. They're looking at the hole most of the time when they're having their practice strokes. They're walking in, one, two, three, go. Does that make sense? Yep. And what they're doing is, is there isn't, that's that level of rhythm in their stroke, but the people who you kind of know are gonna miss, It's already stiffened up. Yeah. Yeah. I just want to continue to keep this, the whole thing flowing. Yeah. Yeah. No staticness at all. It may feel a bit weird and a bit maybe rushed. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. But just like a piece of music, just keep it going. Okay. All right. All right. See a difference. <laughs> that is so subconscious. Yes. And what do you notice out of all the puts you've done today, where was that, that was going past the hole? It went, if it went for the flag, it's going in. Yeah. More importantly, it's got what, pace? Mm. Yeah. Why does it have pace? 
because it has pace because suddenly you've got rhythm mm. versus nursing it up there nursing it up there trying to haul it yeah. yeah yeah see there's a rhythm you imagine have you, have you ever been at a stage in your music where you've got a bit nervous at any stage yeah all the time yeah. okay and how do you get over that what do you do I just i just try and relax as much as possible like i i get i tend to get it on like live tv okay like you know the camera goes red three two one go yeah and all of a sudden i feel like i always say i feel like i've done and i, I can translate it now that we've spoken about this to this yeah like where I feel like I've performed my best a lot of the time in sound checks. Right. Yes. There's no one, there's no pressure no, to there. it. And it's the same with this. Like, I've definitely played my worst golf when I play in pro arms. So what can you do then? <laughs> so how do we, so we've, we've added flow to that. So tell me then when, in, when you do get nervous then, how do you overcome it? What tools do you use to overcome the, the nerves and maybe that, some of that tension so that you do perform still? Well, I always just like, I always believe in my ability. Yeah. And if you t you know you can do it. Yes. So I'm literally saying that to myself in my yeah. head. I don't yeah. I don't particularly you know, I just try and I don't I don't try and overthink it. If I get there and I right, I'm literally in my head with my eyes closed going, "No, you you've done this a billion times. Why are you nervous? Why are you nervous?" Yeah. And and I'm as you asked me this, I'm I'm translating it now into my into <laughs> my into my golf game because it's funny how if there was a three foot putter here and I walked up to it like that, yeah. I'd hold it, yeah. you know, like, like a, a gimme. Yep. But if I stood over it yes. and went like that, there's a good chance I'm missing that. Now there's a reason why the best players in the world all have routines. And they do it because um, we're human, yeah? And mm. just, and it's a, a, despite how successful you've mm. been, you, st you, know, you know, the audience, you get nervous, mm. right? The best players in the world get nervous. And that nerves, if you let it, could destroy a performance. Mm -hmm. But what you've done is, is you've come up with routines, haven't you, mm -hmm. to kind of naturally, you know, you say things to yourself, mm -hmm. you know, I've done it a thousand times. Mm -hmm. And it's the same with the putts. When you walk up to a putt and just do this, because it's so fast, mm -hmm. you're not allowing yourself to kind of contemplate those thoughts. Yeah. So what we do now is, is we build this routine in, mm -hmm. right, with this great posture, so that you now add flow to the whole thing mm -hmm. and you just commit to that. Yeah. Now confidence will come through practice first. Yeah. So what you do is, you, in practice, you can then go, I've done this hundreds and hundreds of times. You now can say that. Mm. Honestly, it mm. works. And then you take it into tournament and really pressurize situations. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. So, yeah. so a few okay. more. And then we'll work around the green for more difficult positions. Yeah? Great. Okay. Oh, look at the pace there, yeah. right? Awesome. It's well, very rare I hit it past the hole. That's what I will say. And this is what I've seen earlier. Yeah. So what you, whenever you're tentative and you don't have any flow, you're guiding it. Mm. And what I'm seeing now, the putter's allowed to flow. Yeah. Okay. So let's just do one other thing. Well, you mentioned short putts, yeah? Being a bit nervous yeah, with yeah, short yeah, putts. Yeah. So let's move to some of these two or three footers. So what I want you to do, I'm gonna, we're going to put a couple of balls here. And, but here's the thing. I want you to walk up. Tap it in. No, no set stance. Yep. Right? So just have some fun with it. I don't care what you guys are in or not, just literally walk up, bang. Okay. Too confident. Good. There you go. This time as you're doing it, okay, as you're walking in now, we're going to add a bit more feel to this. Okay. Right? So you're going to walk in, and I want you this time to imagine, you can, and again, you don't have to do this rushed, there could be a rhythm to this. So even though I'm saying do it quickly, I don't mean like yeah. this. You find your rhythm. And I want you to imagine this is where feel comes in. Right? Yeah. I want you now as you're walking in, just walking out, I want you to visualize the ball trickling just at a pace that's just going to go over the front lip. Okay. Yeah. There you go. Feel that? Mm, okay. Big time. So here's what we're doing. We're getting you out of the conscious thinking, mm -hmm. yeah, where it gets all tight, yeah. and we're getting you more sensory. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we're adding some flow and more sensory feel to everything that you're doing, mm -hmm. okay? So move back, we'll go a little bit further. Now, same thing, walks this golf ball, no setting up to it at all. Yep. Just imagine now this ball just trickling over the front lip. Okay. There we go. Feel good? Yep. Okay. Funny what, this, isn't it? <laughs> what do you notice happening as you're doing this? It feels like the ball's going slow-mo. Yeah. Like, it doesn't feel like it, I'm, like trying to poke it in. No. If it, it, everything feels, if 
if you were to if you were to look at the video in slow mo, I probably am doing same distance either side at None the same rhythm. So notice this: none of this matters. Yeah. You're instinctively doing it. Mm. Yeah. Mm. You're trusting your instincts to do it. One foot in front of the other. One foot in front of the other. You don't go, hang on a second. How do I sing now? You know. <laughs> <laughs> do, you know do you know what I mean? It's the thing is, is of course we can start to settle down, but the thing is, what we're training here, we're training a sensory um, experience, mm. so that. What you'll find is, is the best putters have often talked about, I hold the putter really lightly. Mm. Do you know? Yeah, they do, but they don't think of that. They don't go, I must hold putter lightly. Yeah, yeah. What they're doing is that lightness comes when you start to visualize the ball trickling over the front edge, yeah. you, everything softens, yeah. doesn't mm. it? Mm. Yeah. yeah, and naturally. You could then start to visualize the ball ramming into the back hole. That's all, that's fine too, mm. yeah? Mm. But the point is, is it's not, well yeah, okay. no, understood, yeah. So I hope you enjoyed that video. Massive thank you for Niall for allowing me to share what we did with you guys. And of course, look, if you, if you kind of like these style of videos, look, check out this one here on the short game where we work on chip shots around the green from very, very difficult lies. It's super, super cool. And of course, look, you never have to remember a thing. I'll always put a free download practice guide in the description box below. But until next week, have a wonderful golfing week.